Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And we always start Monday hot with Mr. Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. Good to see you this morning. Nice to see you as well. So, uh, you know, we have a Fed meeting this week. I think the uh, everybody expects 75 basis points. There's a lot of talk about how high or how fast they will go after Wednesday. But I want to talk about something that's probably more important and more relevant. And that is, do you think the Fed has to, to cause a recession, to break the back of inflation? Um, do you think that's kind of because inflation got so entrenched so high, we need a recession to kind of break it? Or do you do you envision maybe a soft landing out there is, is possible? Yeah, so history will tell you that it's never been possible to break inflation without putting the country into a recession. That's just history. Uh, we're at a very different point in the economy that we've ever been historically. There's nothing to compare this to. We've never had a jobs market like we have where there's twice as many jobs as there are people willing to take them, which is driving wages up. We've never had record high inflation like this with a strong job market like that. Um, we've never had the QE that we've experienced and zero interest rates for as long as we've experienced driving up a super bubble like we've experienced. Even the dot-com, uh, era, we didn't have an interest rate policy like this. We didn't have QE going on. That was just, you know, a, a, a pure speculative bubble. So there are so many things that we've never experienced before. But the one thing that that is real and and we know is happening is that inflation is entrenched. It's it's you know not transitory. A lot of it is driven, you know, from wages and things like that. Uh, it's also companies that are raising prices and keeping them higher, even though they don't have to, because they've realized, you know, why bring them down? We don't have to. We're more profitable, making less, charging more. Um, and, you know, the people are still spending. So the consumer is in the mindset that everything's fine. Most people aren't paying attention. They see prices are up. They know that. But they most people think it's transitory because that's still the talk coming out of Washington. Uh, you know, some of the Fed members are saying that without using the word, but mostly it's, you know, the administration and the politicians that are saying, you know, of course, on the one side that, you know, it's only temporary, we're going to bring it down, look at gas prices, you know, inflation only went up a little bit, <laughs> you know, we didn't have any inflation increases because it only went up a little bit or didn't go up at all, you know, last quarter or whatever it was, but yeah. GDP came out stronger, people are still spending money, the consumer is still relatively strong, so it, it takes just like interest rates with the housing market, it takes a little time for these things to catch up. So yeah. very different time right now, but I think you have to slow the economy to destroy demand. Yeah. I mean, so historically speaking, there's never been a time in history where inflation got over 5%. And again, just to, so we're clear, because there's so many inflation gauges, this is headline CPI inflation, just so we're on the same page. I think headline CPI inflation, this go around peaked at 9.1%. And I actually fear, I don't know about you, that heading into the winter, we might revisit that again, and we may put a number in higher than that. The the Eurozone just hit a record high 10.7. Now, obviously, they have some issues with uh, heating oil and gas, given their dependence on Russia, which obviously is a, is a big deal. Um, but I don't know that we've seen the peak yet either. So, I mean, any thoughts on that? Do you think the peak's in at 9.1, or do you think we have a chance at, at unfortunately, revisiting that? Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to get a little bit higher because I think fuel prices are going to are going to climb again. Gas prices are going to go up. Oil prices are going to go up. So that's going to contribute energy costs this winter. I mean, all of the oil companies are already warning people that, you know, your bills are going up. So I think those things are going to continue to be a problem. Housing, although we're seeing corrections in certain markets, the corrections we're seeing are, uh, you know, distorted price levels coming back to where they were. Uh, to, you know, where rates were a few months ago, not where rates are now. So even though we're seeing 20, 30, 40% price reductions, those were from distorted levels where people raise prices from where the comps were at two and a half, three percent They said, well, shoot, if this house sold for a million at two and a half, three percent let's list it at 1.2 at 7% because they're not listening to the realtors of the market. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is they drop that price by $200,000 back to a million, but that's where it was when rates were at two and a half, three percent so the housing market still hasn't realistically corrected in most areas where it should be down 20 to 30% from where it was at the peak, uh, you know, not 
you know, these, these distorted prices afterwards. So I think, uh, I think housing is going to continue to put pressure on inflation. Food has not come down. That's going to continue to put pressure on inflation. And of course, wages, uh, you know, employers are still having to pay more to keep people employed uh, and to attract uh, new talent. So, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure out there still that the only way, the only way to correct it is you got to destroy demand. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's very true. We're going to get an important number on Friday, right? Friday, we will get the October jobs number and expectations are that we created another 200,000 jobs in the month of October. Um, you know, we get the jolts report tomorrow, which again is job openings, leave and quits or something like that. Um, so again, it's, it's the job market is, is very strong. Uh, stronger than it typically is. It's it's actually what is going to prevent a recession call from Q1, Q2, in my opinion. Uh, the the Bureau won't call that a recession. So I think you're right. Uh, and most importantly, I think ha- this will be a housing-led recession, to your last point. And I say that with ugly numbers already being reported, and they're about to get uglier. What do I mean? Uh, we are down 17%. Again, I'm using round numbers in new home construction. We're down 31% in housing transactions already. And if you look at the Q3 GDP report that came out strong at 2.7, if you go, if you actually read the report, it would have been 3.9% if not for housing. It's called residential investment. It was down 27%, something like that. Uh, in individually, which pulled the entire GDP down 1.3%. And I think new construction gets worse. I think housing transactions get worse. And again, this is what I think Jerome Powell meant by housing reset. Transactions stop, building stops. We just let time heal. And I think this is going to be a housing-led recession. What do you think? Yeah, it's that's a big part of it. So housing and autos generally lead most recessions, and we're seeing distress in the auto industry in terms of credit and things like that. People walking away from vehicles like they were houses back in 08 and 09. So uh, there's you know there's a lot of damage yet to be done. Like you said, we're going to get a Fed meeting. 75 basis points is is already baked in. That's what's going to happen. The question is, what kind of guidance are they going to give moving forward? They had that you know Wall Street Journal wrote that article last week saying yeah. that the Fed might slow the rate of hikes, which is now the new pivot, slowing. Exactly. Slowing uh, is the new pivot, pivot now. So the market had a nice little bounce off to the races, yeah. but you know there was a lot of rebalancing going on there because the tech earnings were down. So you know, a lot of money came out of tech, went into the Dow. The Dow shot through the roof. Uh, there was a lot of systematic, uh, you know, programmatic transactions happening. A lot of investment funds rebalancing, things like that. So there was a lot of different things going on that drove the markets over the last week during that bear market ra- or yeah bear market rally which is losing momentum now ahead of the fed and if the fed comes out and said look jackson hole <laughs> you know like he yeah. did last time and yeah. doesn't change anything else then you're going to see the markets unwind what they've done the last week put in a new low then the question is what does the fed do next and then all the speculation starts towards december and what the Fed's going to do next is what is the information that they have? Is inflation still high? Is everything still running hot? Is the consumer spending still strong? Is GDP still you know, printing good numbers? Unfortunately, the good news we had this week in company earnings, that's the big thing. The Fed's looking at, you know, companies' earnings are still strong. Where the misses were, were in the speculative, you know, tech stuff and advertising, but the gen, general, you know, uh, indices. The real the earnings, economy. Yeah, the, the real, real economy, economy, the earnings are still strong. The consumer is still spending, plowing right through inflation. You might see a little cutting back, eating out and things like that, but they're still spending in other areas. And with prices up, that's going to keep sales up. It's going to keep GDP up, which is going to keep earnings skewed a little bit. So that's what the Fed's looking at. Strong job markets, GDP is doing well. Uh, consumers are doing well. They still have savings. Their credit card balances are climbing, but they're not exorbitant. And, you know, they're just plowing right through this inflationary time. So they have no reason or information to slow. So I I think they're, I think the market's going to get a rude awakening uh, Wednesday. Yeah, I think it's going to be, again, for me, it's all about the press conference. And I do think it boils down to how fast and how high. This, This is my great fear, right? I think there's two options. They continue with the pedal to the metal doing 75 in December and maybe 50 in February, and then they could be done, right? That'll take us to four and three quarters or whatever, five maybe, um, and be done. Or this whole Fed pivot, which is now Fed slowdown, 
they go 50 in December, then they do 25. They'll be doing 25 for most of next year because the inflation inflation will just get ahead of it and they won't be able to catch up. That's, you know, if we're still raising rates in the summer next year, uh, that's a mistake, right? Again, you've got to nip, you've got to Volcker this thing. You've got to get ahead of it. You've unfortunately got to cause some pain. If they don't, if they get soft, it's just going to be around longer and it'll get entrenched. And then the feedback loop of wage inflation and man, you could, this thing could get gnarly. Well, again, I don't think they have the data to soften. So I think right now, 75, the message is going to be, look, the data was good. We're going to be data dependent. We're looking at 75 in December too. And then when we get into next year, we'll see, uh, you know, if we can slow the pace of hiking. I think that's what you might hear, but I don't think he's going to speak to any of that this meeting. I think it's going to be nothing's changed. Yeah. We're still going. It's still a problem. Inflation's our, our number one mandate. We're going to take do whatever it takes, use all of our tools. And nothing else has happened. Nothing's broken in the markets yet. The dollar's strong, but that's not, you know, that, that you know, our, everything else is holding steady right now. So I just don't see a reason now. I don't know what they're going to say. You never know what Powell's yeah. going to do or say or off the cuff. He might say neutral. We're neutral again. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and either way, you just play whatever he says. If it's if he comes out any you know slight hint of dovishness, the market's going to be off to the races. Not but they don't the want that. They no. want tightening financial conditions. They do not want the easing of financial conditions. So I think he's going to talk the markets down again. They do not. I guarantee you, they don't like what they saw last week. Uh, they want to see more oh, demand yeah. destruction. Uh, they do believe they can land the plane softly. And like I said, I think it already blew up in the sky, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. it like these things are lagging. And again, the, the caveat this go around is that jobs market. We've never had a situation like this. So yeah. that's that's the interesting thing. So I think it's going to take a lot more work longer than what they anticipated to get this thing under control. If they can, yeah. they may yeah. not ever be able to. We might have a new normal in, in an inflation rate. Oh, that would be interesting. So again, we get a lot of jobs numbers this week. We get the Jolts report on Tuesday. We had a million one less job openings, which was, you know, bad news, good news, kind of that story. Thursday's the uh, new weekly unemployment claims, uh, which is averaging right around 200,000. That needs to jump much higher for the Fed to be winning. And then, of course, Friday's October jobs number, which is expected to be 200. I actually have a guess of 189. I'm going I'm to guess it disappoints a little. But Greg, uh, how can people find you? gregdickerson.com. That's where all my info lives. Go check it out. Thank you, buddy.